In September of 2021, a Russian expedition searching for radioactive waste pinpointed the exact location of the reactor compartment of the troubled Soviet submarine K-19, 60 years after she was deliberately thrown overboard in the Kara Sea. K-19 was Moscow's first nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarine and was launched in 1959 as the Russians' answer to the USS Nautilus. However, her production and testing were so rushed that even her captain did not believe she was fit for combat. Two years later, during her first ever mission in the North Atlantic Sea, K-19's nuclear compartment suffered a malfunction. Already considered one of the unluckiest vessels to ever serve any nation, and without a backup coolant system while hundreds of feet underwater, Russia's mighty vessel was now on the verge of turning into a nuclear bomb. World War III In the spring of 1961, the Soviet K-19 nuclear submarine was ordered to conduct exercises in the North Atlantic, near the southern tip of Greenland, and the crew was thrilled to take the helm and serve the motherland on her first official mission. On July 4th, while in the middle of a maneuver, the submarine suffered a malfunction when her previously damaged coolant pipe burst. As the cooling system failed and liquid leaked into the reactor, the temperature within the nuclear core alarmingly rose. Because the submarine had been launched so quickly into her first mission, she was not fitted with the backup system. Her reactor was then shut down, but it continued to heat up, reaching a temperature of 1,470 degrees Fahrenheit. Unless urgent measures were taken, the nuclear reactor would explode, causing more extensive damage than the bombs of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And while a reactor meltdown inside a submarine is already a significant threat for her crew, K-19 held more importance than usual. As she was operating near one of the NATO bases in the Atlantic Ocean, an explosion, however accidental, could lead the United States and the Allies to believe the Soviet Union was attempting to start a full-blown nuclear war. Moreover, there was no way of contacting their superiors for advice on the situation, as the long-range radio system also broke. The fate of the entire world now rested on Captain First Rank Nikolai Vladimirovich Zetayev, who, while utterly overwhelmed, was still determined to do something. Make do. Captain Zetayev's first order of business was to abort the mission and direct the submarine south in hopes of encountering a friendly submarine in the vicinity and with no coolant system to stop the submarine's nuclear reactor from overheating, he asked for volunteers to break into the reactor compartment and fix the leak. Lacking sufficient protection gear, and with only a few naval raincoats and gas masks, the entire crew knew that whoever volunteered for the task would not come back. Still, 22 brave sailors raised their hands. During the crew's opening of the sealed reactor room, Radioactive steam was released and sucked up by the ship's ventilation system, putting everyone at risk of radiation poisoning. The volunteers had no time to lose. After Zetayev organized the sailors into several teams of three men, he ordered the engineers to head directly into the reactor room and create a makeshift cooling system, cutting one of the valves on the reactor and connecting it to the drinking water supply on board. The teams would run into the compartment, work for only five to ten minutes, and then run out to reduce the radiation exposure to a minimum. Racing against the clock, the volunteers opened the compartment's door and headed right into nuclear gases. Russia's first nuclear submarine. In 1957, Russia launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite into orbit, putting the Soviet Union ahead of the United States in the space race. Still, the Soviets were behind in the nuclear-powered arms race, particularly under the water. To catch up, the Soviet Union began developing its first ballistic missile-equipped nuclear submarine in 1958. K-19 was the first generation of Soviet nuclear submarines equipped with three nuclear ballistic missiles, each with ranges of 400 miles and thus capable of delivering severe blows to the United States coastline. The K-19 submarine, capable of operating at a maximum depth of 490 feet underwater, 
was completed on November 12, 1960. And while she was undoubtedly a major technological advancement for the Soviets, the construction was incredibly rushed, as the Russians were determined to build a nuclear submarine fleet that would rival the United States as soon as possible. Bad Omens The frantic pace in the development of the K-19 submarine led to sloppiness and shortcuts, and the quality of workmanship was compromised to speed up the launching. In 1959, two accidental explosions and poisoning mishaps caused eight casualties. During construction, as the builders hurried to finish the project, a welder let hot solder drip into a coolant pipe that led the substance into the reactor core. As a result, the pipe suffered a microscopic crack that went unnoticed. It would later prove disastrous. As the K-19's mechanics complained about the proceedings, the top brass told them that the reactor was already too complex to do anything more about it. After the submarine was deemed seaworthy in 1959, the Soviet Navy held a christening ceremony to celebrate the nation's newest technological achievement. Going against naval tradition, a woman was chosen to break a champagne bottle against the vessel before she launched. However, as the ladies swung the bottle against the submarine's stern, the champagne bounced off, unbroken. For the superstitious sailors, the bad omen was one of the significant clues that hinted at a troubled future. The Most Elite Crew The nuclear reactor aboard the submarine was improperly operated at first, which led to the mishandling of one of the control rods and its subsequent bending. This was caused chiefly by confusion and miscommunication among the crew. The ensuing repairs delayed the submarine's first mission, and some of the crew members involved in the incident, including the ship's captain, were demoted. As the K-19 crew was being drawn up once again, the comrade chosen to command the Soviet Union's latest technological marvel was Nikolai Vladimirovich Zetayev. An ambitious and capable officer, Zetayev received an early promotion to captain during his defense of the Soviet Union in World War II. Still, even Captain Zetayev believed that the production and testing of the submarine were extremely rushed and felt that the submarine fleet was not fit for combat voicing his opinion several times to no avail. Despite K-19's questionable quality, the ship was in the global spotlight due to the arms race, and with the eyes of the entire world placed on Russia, several high-ranking officials decided to ignore all the problems. The submarine was then commissioned on April 30th, 1961. The 139 sailor crew of the most advanced Russian submarine of the era had mostly served on diesel submarines, and were now part of one of the most elite naval teams in the entire Soviet Union. In addition, the submarine also hosted missile men, reactor officers, torpedo men, doctors, cooks, stewards, and several observing officers. The Escape As the volunteers stumbled out of the nuclear reactor room on July 4th, 1961, just minutes after entering, it became clear that the exposure was too much for a human to handle. Thankfully, the team's provisional cooling system was working. Soon, a United States Navy destroyer picked up the K-19 short-range distress call. The American ship began to shadow the submarine and even offered to help. However, Zetayev was afraid he would be deemed a traitor back in the motherland and refused. Despite the captain not wanting the Americans to get a hold of the Soviets' first ever nuclear submarine, his crew was becoming anxious as time dragged on, and Zetayev was running out of options. Luckily, an S-270 Russian vessel appeared on the horizon at the last minute. The crew was later evacuated to the diesel-powered submarine, and K-19 was towed back to base on the Kola Peninsula. Nevertheless, the engineering team had been significantly exposed to radiation doses in the form of noxious gas and steam while installing the makeshift device. And while a complete disaster was averted by the brave volunteers that saved K-19, it cost them their lives within two years. A Hiroshima Submarine K-19 was back in service a few months after the incident but the Soviet Navy dumped the radioactive compartment into the Kara Sea. Still, 
bad luck would follow the submarine wherever she went. In November of 1969, K-19 was involved in a collision with the American submarine USS Gato in the Barents Sea and suffered heavy damage. Three years later, a fire resulted in 32 casualties, and in 1992, the submarine secured her reputation as a cursed ship, earning the nickname Hiroshima. Then, in 1990, with her bad luck mounting and with Russia crumbling into pieces, Hiroshima was finally decommissioned. Before the fall of the Soviet Union, K-19's fate was a closely guarded secret, but Western intelligence was still aware of many rumors. The Soviet crew members had been sworn to secrecy, and they were expected to lie to doctors in routine checkups even decades later. Finally, a year after the submarine's decommissioning, the Russian newspaper Pravda confirmed that radiation had taken the lives of many members of the submarine's crew, publishing the story of the brave men that fought for their nation until their very last breath. Thank you for watching Dark Seas. If you liked our video, please consider hitting the like button and clicking on the screen to check out our other Dark Documentaries channels, and click the bell icon to be notified of our newest historical and military content. Stay tuned.